Hello to all of the English students out there online with the best place on the planet for learning a second language. We're talking about Verbling.com, the Facebook of language learning online. This is Jeff Watson. I am from Vancouver, Canada, and I am very happy to be one of the English teachers for Verbling.com and I'm looking for a group of hard-working students who are going to join the class. The topic for this hour is Earth's energy. I am a big supporter of the idea of using clean, limitless, free energy for the world and one form of that is wind power and so I'm going to ask people questions about the potential for wind power in your country are there windy areas where they could build wind farms or do you already have wind farms in your country and do you do or have you ever done any activities that depend on the wind, like flying a kite, for example, or sailing in a sailboat. And so what I would like to ask is for everyone to please download the document right now at the verbling.com website. If you find the information about this class, you will find a button labeled class materials so please if everyone could download the document that I have prepared for the class you will be able to open it on your computer and clearly see the text and you will be able to read it extra important this class to download the document and while I'm waiting for people to join I would like to turn on the screen share and show you uh, the the Michael, in all of the Verbling classes, we're asking the students to please click this button to turn on your microphone, and as soon as you're finished speaking, please click off, turn off your microphone. So you're clicking on and clicking off. And that way we eliminate all of the unpleasant background noise that comes from people. And so, uh, as people are joining the class now, uh, I would like to uh, say hello and uh, ask them where they are, so where they're from. So, Farhan, mm. are, are you there? Yeah, I'm your, old, uh, I'm your old student teacher. How are you today? <laughs> Good. One of my, one of my old <laughs> yeah. favorites. I'm fine, thank you. Glad to be okay. here. And so, uh, please tell the group where okay. you're from. And does your country have potential for wind power? Uh, when, okay, so um, uh, I'm from Pakistan, and um, so uh, our country, uh, as we know that um, uh, here is a, um, a lot of uh, energy crisis in Pakistan, mm. so mm -hmm. uh, that's why the electricity is not present all the time. Uh, well, but our government are trying to uh, do something. Uh, just uh, they are planning uh, they to um, improve it, but uh, <clears throat> still uh, they, this is uh, unsolvable. Uh, this is uh, still uh, unsolvable uh, problem, and so um, uh, as per the wind energy, uh, so. Uh, there is no uh, such uh, uh, thing to get uh, energy from the wind, um, wind uh, from the energy, wind? but uh, mm -hmm. wind, yeah, yeah, wind, yeah. wind. Okay. So, no, well, uh, great. I, I, I hope that uh, the technology improves so that all the countries can use it. Uh, but do you think that there are windy places 
uh, like um, does Pakistan have uh, a coastline, uh, an ocean coastline? No, uh, sorry, teacher. I, I told it's just I told you that there is no um, because we are very okay. Now you might have been muted there, Farhad. Um, we've just lost your sound, so uh, I'll come back to you. Uh, when? Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm fine, thank you. Good. And so, could you please uh, answer our, our wind power question? Where are you from, and could your country take advantage of wind power? Yeah, um, my country is Vietnam. We have a very long coastline. Oh, so, good. yeah, we have a lot of wind, but the government just like started uh, utilizing wind power, I think, maybe you said we, like five or six years ago. Okay, right. Well, yeah, I think but it's new. Started. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's just too new. Yeah. Really yeah. Too new. And and did anyone use wind power before uh, in you know with uh, on farms or not necessarily to generate electricity, but maybe to pump water? You know, uh, mm -hmm. Actually, traditional no. windmills. Yeah. No, because I think that we 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 cannot uh, produce wind wind turbines. At this moment, we we have yeah. to import from Germany. Okay. So all the yeah the um how can I say the wind turbines are very uh, expensive for us. Yes, right. And and I you know I think it's important to use the the best technology with these sorts of things. Yeah. Yes. All right. Great. And so, uh, uh, Armando, are you there? Hello, Armando. Armando Soto. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is go back to Juan Manuel. Hello. Now you need to turn on your microphone. And so uh, that's, yeah, Hello. clicking on the button. Yes, great. Where, where are you connecting from? Uh, Argentina. Okay, so um, we're, we're talking about wind power. And so, has Argentina started to take advantage of of using wind power to generate electricity? Uh, I have no idea, actually. Some some places we use that kind of energy. Yes, but, but not not, not, not where in you other, live. Not in the whole country. Yes. Okay. All right, and uh, well, uh, do are are people talking about it, or uh, do you, do you know how most of the electricity is generated in in Argentina? We have an uh, hydraulic um, building. I don't know how to. Okay. Yeah, that's describe. hydroelectric. Hydroelectric. hydroelectric powers. Yeah. Okay. And yes, we do have. Uh, uh, eolic, uh, wind, wind uh, energy. Okay. Windmills, right. windmills, and sure. And solar, some solar panels. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. So, and and uh, Quinn, I think, has used the best word: wind turbines. Wind, wind turbines. turbines. Yeah. Windmills. Uh, I picture the older traditional windmills, maybe okay. from from Europe. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Okay. I'm going to keep saying hello to some people. And so, uh, Dem, are you there? Hello, Mr. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> well, yes, welcome. Sir. So, please Thanks. tell us about the, the wind power potential of your country. Um, <clears throat> actually, here the, uh, the energy is uh, produced with a uh, hydroelectric. Uh, yeah. Um, yes, hydroelectric. And the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, this way, the wind um, um, energy is not produced here, as far as no, I, I know. Okay, uh, and but could it be utilized? Uh, I mean, are there places? And and please tell everyone where yeah. you're connecting from. Uh, I think that here that could be a good choice, a good uh, alternative. Because here are a lot of uh, places 
where the wind is very powerful, no? Okay. Yeah. Has a, but uh, does not. Uh, actually, uh, now that's that's not that way. It's just the hydroelectric energy. Yeah. No. No. Well, I think that's uh, that's. I think maybe hydroelectric power, hydroelectric energy, is is maybe the best form of of energy. But if it if there's rain. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you. <laughs> and I, I'm going to move on right, to next. Slim. All right, teacher. Yes. Welcome. Where are you connecting from? I'm connecting uh, from Tunisia. Okay. And so, how about your country? Uh, is there potential for wind power? And has anyone yes. taken advantage of that? Yes, uh, I think 50% uh, of uh, energy produced for electricity is produced from wind uh, turbine. Really? Uh, 50 yeah. or 15? 15%. I said 50. Oh, okay. No, no, sorry. Uh, what's the answer? 50. 15. Five zero. Oh, 15. Okay. 15. 15%. All right, great. Well, that's good. That's good. And and what other forms of energy do people use? Uh, the most, uh, I think, uh, between 18% or uh, more related fossil fuel, like uh, gas, uh, natural gas, or... Uh, Fuel? Yes. Uh, diesel, maybe and, diesel uh, fuel? I think uh, another 5% or more uh, solar uh, energy. Okay, great. That's a, it's very interesting. Okay, thank you. And, and Tunisia has a coastline? Ocean coastline? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, right, 1,500 uh, kilometers. Okay. And it's windy. Mm, yeah, it's. Um, I think uh, the the wind. It's not uh, very windy. You know, uh, uh, Tunisia is uh, not in the ocean. Uh, with the, uh, there is the difference between the ocean and uh, the sea, Mediterranean Sea. Okay. It's, it's a little calm. A little, uh, yeah, there would there would I be a big difference. Do not yeah. in uh, the sea. Great. <laughs> um, Thank you. All right. Um, Sorry, I'm going to move on, but thank you so much. And uh, Mina, go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, hello, teacher. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Mina I'm from Egypt, and I think uh, we want to take advantage fully, fully from the off, sorry, of the wind energy. Mm -hmm. But do you have good places for generating wind where it's where the wind is blowing strongly all the time? Because yeah, yeah. Could, in, uh, in desert, we have a very strong wow. sun and we have a very strong uh, wind. Okay, right. I don't know if the, the sand would be a factor in the desert, but yeah, okay, interesting. Thank you. And have you done any wind uh, sports? Like, uh, have you gone sailing? For example, wind-powered sports. No, I no? didn't. Oh no, no, you haven't. Okay, all Not. right, great. I thought that no. that might have been quite common to do on the river. But great, thank you. And uh, I'm going to move to Pablo. Welcome, Pablo. Where are you connecting from? Hello, I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Great. And so uh, we're talking about wind power or windy places. Uh, yes, uh, here in Argentina, uh, the first recourse is uh, eolic uh, energy. Really? Eolic, right? Okay. Eolic. Well, no, but we, I, we, yeah. we say wind power. Uh, wind power. Right. Wind power. Yes, is is uh, the principle, and I'm not sure, but I think that we buy some energy to Brazil. Oh, I you, think I'm you not buy sure. energy from from, from Brazil. Brazil. Oh. I I think I'm not sure. Okay. But uh, here the 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 principal resource is uh, wind. Really? Here in the okay. Uh, to have energy, the the wind. Yes, okay. in the Patagonia. Do you okay. know the Patagonia? 
Yes, the south. Is the south? Yes, Chubut, Rio Negro, Santa Cruz. There are a, a lot of. I don't know how to say a uh, a place without mountains. Ah, uh, yes. How okay. Do you call it? Yes. Plains. And a lot of wine. Yes, plains. And all okay. the energy comes from there. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Great. Because yes, uh, the Patagonia is world famous for being windy. So excellent. Mm. And uh, I'd like to say hello to Andre. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. And so Thank you. We're, we're we're talking about wind power. And so, have they been taking advantage of that in Brazil in any locations? Yes, in the north we have a uh, uh, a little places with this technology. Okay, because the they're north. because they're more isolated, so it's better if they can produce their own energy locally. Yeah, but the, in Brazil we have more hydro energy. Right. In Brazil, our uh, energy matrix matrix. Sure. And and now that that people would understand you, but uh, maybe the energy grid or the electrical grid. Look look for that word in describing kind of the network, the electrical ah, yes. network, right? Okay. Is is powered with hydroelectric? Yeah. Yeah. I can I can understand that with <laughs> the 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 biggest river in the world being in the country and uh, yeah. the uh, right. Amazon River. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I'm just going to try and say hello to Armando. Armando. Okay. So, let's let's move on. Now, I have the document. So, the plan is to read the article first, and then I have a radio broadcast. These these are all produced by I believe it's National Public Radio which is a public broadcaster funded by the American government. And so um, this, so that we can listen to the radio program, which is a little different from the article, and read the transcript. And so I ask everyone, please, to download the document. You'll definitely find it useful. And so uh, what I'd like to do is to start with uh, Andre, and I'm going to bring up the document here. And let's start reading. And I really uh, want all of the students, and, and Slim has put the direct link to the document in the Verbling chat box. So thanks a lot. And we want students to ask as many questions or make comments, quick questions and quick comments as possible. That'd be great. And so, Andre, could you please read our title? And Yes. Um... Where is yeah? Is the sky the uh, limit? Uh, is the sky the limit for wind power by Christopher Joyce? And that's a it's a recent story. And here's a, a picture of a pretty impressive wind farm. Sort of they look yeah. like low tech uh, turbines. But go ahead, please. Uh, wind turbines at the San Gorgonio Pass wind farm in. White uh, white water, uh, California. Be, yeah, good. In 2012, wind power is going faster than ever. Almost half of the new source of electricity added of the U.S. power grid last year were wind farms. But is the sky the limit? Several scientists. Mm, now say it's actually possible to have so many turbines that they start to lose power. They still each other's wind. Okay, great. Uh, let me help you with turbines. Ah, tur turbines. 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 And uh, faster than ever. 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 And it's uh, almost half of the new sources. Sources, sources of electricity. Sources. Okay. okay. All right, so, so wind much. power is growing quickly in the U.S., and, and the sky is the limit. Now, this is a question, but this phrase is a very common expression where you say there are no limits. So the sky is the limit. The skies is the limit. 
And so uh, that's, that's what we say. It's a very common expression. But I wonder if they have built too many wind turbines here in this location where they are blocking or stealing each other's wind. Is okay. he uh, mm -hmm. California? California State? Yes, California State. Right. What, and, what a city? Uh, sorry? In, what city in California? Uh, do you know? White, Whitewater. Ah, Whitewater okay. would be the name of the city. Ah, okay. Uh, now, and this, this pass, well, this is the name of the wind farm. Ah, so, okay. San Gorgonio <laughs> Wind <laughs> Farm. Okay. Uh, but it, a pass refers to um, the space between two mountains, and that's an ideal place to build uh, a wind farm. But, yeah. Okay. Because the wind is sort of channeled. And so, uh, I'm going to move on to, ah, oh, we have somebody, Baiter, uh, Baiyar. Mamedov? Uh, Bakhtiar. Bakhtiar. Ba Bakhtiar. Uh, thank you. Yes, yeah. great. Uh, where are you connecting from? Uh, sorry? Where are you connecting from? Uh, I'm from uh, Cyprus. Cyprus. Okay. Yeah. So, could, could you please read this paragraph for us? Uh, uh, what's, uh, what's paragraph? It begins with uh, sailboat. Sailboat. Ah, so, uh, under sailboat you slow down. Yeah, that's because. Uh, sorry, uh, no, no. Sorry, from the from the top, uh, sailboat captains. Sailboat. Uh, my sail. Oh, okay. Sail. Yeah. Uh, sailboat uh, captains. Uh, expense. Uh, it's similar. Uh, phenomenon. Uh, phenomenon. They call it uh, dirty okay. air. If you're uh, yeah. studying uh, direct, directly, 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 uh, of under sailboat, you slow down. That's because the the red uh, boat creates a uh, Turbulent uh, vortex of air uh, uh, back, back, back behind. Him. Ah, behind it's as uh, the wind slips of its uh, sides. As sailors know, uh, dirty air uh, means less power. Okay, thank you. Great. And so, uh, what we're talking about is uh, and, and just the pronunciation of lead in this case, lead boat. And uh, so, can, can people understand the concept when you're sailing? Uh, the yeah, concept of dirty air? I understand. Yeah, great. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm going to move on to, uh, sorry, uh, Dem, could you read this next section for us, please? Uh, yes. Um, from the blades. The blades. Okay, the blades on wind, uh, the blades on wind uh, turbines made their air too. So engineers space uh, the machines far apart, but when developers want to bring the total number of turbines in the U.S. to more than two hundred thousand, <clears throat> up from about forty-five thousand today. Would that spread the turbine air far and wide? Mm -hmm. Please continue. Harper, uh, five, five, physicist. Uh, physicist. Harper, physicist. physicist. David uh, K. Keith says that that's possible. With very large wind farms, he says, we can now see long footprints that extend. In some cases, tens of kilometers downstream, where you have slower moving wind. Okay, and so thank you. Uh, just turbulent, turbulent, and just to make oh, sure turbulence. this is 100, 100,000. 
Okay, and uh, great. Oh, and okay. so, yeah, and and so, what what are they talking about? What's the general concept here? A anybody? Could somebody explain this in their own words? We're we're talking about a limitation or a problem with wind farms, with big wind farms. I think they are talking about uh, yes. the factors that uh, just you know spoil the wind power. Yes, good. Okay, so this is a negative problem. Yes, absolutely. And and so what what is the difficulty? What what is the problem? It's first problem with if if you are uh, sailing right after a uh, uh, ship. Yeah, it uh, makes uh, the makes this dirty air. So it's uh, the wind is not useful because the first ship right. split over the wind. Yes, so the wind becomes turbulent and slower, and so turbulence exactly. is swirling wind. If you can see my cursor, can you see my cursor, people? <laughs> no, maybe not. And and so you can see that the Irish boat sailboat is downwind of the Great Britain boat and so maybe his wind is being blocked and, and then what's what's the problem with wind farms big wind farms um, and, and yeah there, Go ahead, please. there is uh, uh, the power is not the same no because right? the this problem of the of the dairy air yeah. No. Okay. And and um, we're talking. Or sorry. Well, uh, but yeah, but it's not really dirty air, although that's the expression that's used. It's uh, people well, understand. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not polluted air. I I just want to make sure that people understand that. Uh, just maybe I'll, I'll. Sorry. Just uh, expression yeah. or idea, yes, not literal. Exactly. So the it's not a literal expression. Sorry, Mina, I'm gonna uh, mute your uh, microphone. People. Sorry. Uh, so what we're talking about is an expression. They don't literally mean dirty air. Uh, so what we're talking about is um, the downwind of the wind farms. So the wind is blowing from this direction and there is turbulent and slower air downwind. They also use the expression downstream which means which usually has to do with water down the the river. Okay, and but how big are those areas of slower moving wind? How big are Ten, those areas? Tens of kilometers. Yeah, all right. And so it's in terms of building lots and lots of wind farms in one area, there is a limit. Uh, yeah, if that's 20, 30, 40 kilometers downwind, yeah. with you have slower moving wind well you you cannot build another wind farm uh, okay, I, have, great. I have a question excellent Me, Go Paolo. Ahead, please. Uh, downstream uh, means that you are sailing with the stream or against the stream oh, okay now uh, you are downstream uh, is a river okay sorry yes. the river. <laughs> it's a little hard so here's a river yes and the water is moving downstream yeah so right. if you're going if you're going downstream you're going with the water so it's easy all right if you're trying if you're trying to go upstream you're going against right. I got the it. water I got it. okay thank you <laughs> all right so excellent these this is why we're reading this is to uh, learn this kind of of um, vocabulary Okay, so let's uh, get reading this here. So uh, uh, I'm going to move on to Wen. Could you read this for us, please? Yeah. Keith is one of the several scientists who have designed computer simulations to see what might happen at huge wind farms. 
if we're going to scale wind power up to supply a significant fraction of the global energy demand, say 10% of global energy demand, as we get towards mid-century. Then these effects begin to matter, he says. Exactly how much they matter, rule, we still don't know. Okay, and so the world is talking about scaling up wind power, uh, increasing it and getting to 10% of global energy demand. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, when is the mid-century? What year would be the mid-century? 2050. Yeah, exactly. 2050 or 2050. All right, and so they're starting to take a look at this. Okay. And so, uh, let me, where, where are we here? Uh, when could you read this next short paragraph for us, please? Yeah. The answer has become a kind of puzzle for atmospheric scientists. Just, just what they ask is the saturation point for wind power. That is, when is the wa when is the wind so dirty that there's no point in building one more turbine? Okay. And so uh, a saturation point. Uh, I don't know if people understand that term. It's not necessarily that common, but it just means for a given area, what would be the saturation point for wind power, meaning what would be the maximum number of turbines you could build and, in, uh, and put in place in one area. All right, so great. So I don't think we have to worry about this problem just yet. Juan Manuel, could you read this next selection of text, please? Okay. Okay. So far, that point is hypothetical. To get the saturation, you you would need to you would need huge wind farms, bigger than bigger than any that exist now, with thousands of square miles packed with turbines. For the forty-five thousand big turbines now spread around the cluster throughout the US that's not a problem okay great and uh, uh, just hypo when you see this uh, syllable in English hypo hypothetical hypo yeah great okay. all right and could you read this for us please the next paragraph Asmot Asmot asmospheric scientist Mark uh, Jacobson at Stanford University has done calculations that suggest you'd have to get up into the many many millions of turbines before you lose a serious amount of wind. And people and people are thinking about how to get around the problem. Okay, good. All right. So we need lots and lots of turbines before we start having this problem. But um, you know, efficiency is very important with these wind farms. Just even 1% uh, less wind would be a problem. Slim, could you please read this? Okay. And, and then, uh, we found that uh, by splitting out the wind farms themselves, Jacobson says, you reduce the this impact of having low energy when you just have one wind farm with a lo with lots of turbines. Elizabeth Salerno at the Industries America Wind Energy Association says developers are making sure they are not going to dilute the wind dung that would lose money. Okay, great. And so I'll stop you there to dilute uh, or dilute. Dilute. Dilute the wind. And so, and just the idea of spreading things out. That means building them far apart, not all together. So yes. spreading out the wind farms themselves. But like, if I'm... Like, yeah, go ahead, please. Like uh, the, when uh, we take shower, the, the water is spreading. Okay, sure. Yeah, the the shower head spreads out the water. 
Uh, it's not exactly how we use it, but that's, that's the <laughs> idea. But if I was building a wind farm, investing money, I would want to know, uh, I would want a law that says nobody could build another wind farm in front of me, <laughs> up, upwind of me. So, yeah, great. And so uh, we've got some comments. No, we're, we're good. Let, let's keep going here. Excellent job. Uh, Mina, are you there? Yes. Okay, could you read this, please? Sure. Our developers spent a lot of time with experts and atmospheric scientists to ensure that they are putting each individual wind turbine and the entire project in a location and a layout that's going to optimize the result. Saler Salerno says. Okay, please continue. But as you build more and more wind farms, spreading them out could present complications too. You can't put them uh, just anywhere. You need to have transmission lines reasonably close. For example, although you get more wind farms, more people are likely to co are likely to complain about the view, and lots of places simply aren't windy enough to be useful. Okay, all right, and so having to build them uh, far apart or spread out creates problems. It would be nice if you could build them all in one location, but that's not going to work. That's not uh, realistic. And so you need to think of transmission lines and where people live. They're going to complain about uh, the way it looks. All right, great. And so let's keep going. Good job with your pronunciation. Pablo, could you read this, please? Uh, yes. Uh, even, with, uh, even with those limits, there is plenty of wind to go around, Salerno says. We have enough wind resource in the U.S. on shore and on land to do 10 times over our power production today. That's 10 times all the power produced now in the U.S. from every means, including coal, nuclear, and hydropower. Okay, so could I get people to put that information in their own words? Pablo, if, if you want to, but... That's a pretty amazing statistic, if it is true. Uh, what, what did they just say in the article? That there is a, a lot of wind, a lot of uh, uh, places with wind. Right, That's exactly. Uh, a lot of potential, uh, and, and how much? Uh, uh, ten times over our power production today. Okay, so if you take all the energy, all the electricity produced in the United States right now, that's including everything, coal, nuclear power, hydropower, everything, you could produce 10 times as much with wind power alone. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's pretty awesome. I, I love hearing stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, and can so, I, yes, question. Can I make a please. question? What does uh, coal mean, or what is it? Ah, coal. Uh, can, yeah. can anybody describe what that is? It's a fossil fuel. It's, uh, yes, it's fossil like fuel. To burn it to get power. Good, and it, it's it's uh, a rock. Okay. A black it's rock. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yes. It's made of yep. carbon. Carbon. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, right, great. Okay, so that's coal. That's the word that we use to describe that. Okay, good okay. question. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of uh, food, food stock? Well, uh, let me see. I, I would say it's a source of fuel, uh, but it, it's a fossil fuel. Ah, yes, fossil it, fuel. It's, you know, I guess it was created in a similar way to oil, perhaps, just kind of a solid form of oil. I, maybe that's not correct, but uh, uh, Andre, could you please read this next paragraph for us? Yes. Uh, Sarleno says 
no one expe expects wind power to come anywhere close to that. For one thing, the nation's electricity grid runs more reali uh, reliably, reliably, if, reliably, with util utilities can draw off a different kind of energy that can back each other up. When the wind isn't blowing, the, the grid can draw on natural gas or nuclear power. Or if natural gas prices spike, people can use more wind. Okay, and so just this word is, is important, rely. Reliably. That, that syllable is lie, so reliably. Mm -hmm. Re to rely on something, yeah. uh, Re dependably. Yeah. Well, but this is the big problem with wind. So, you know, what, what is the big problem with wind power? Uh, how can I say? And, and anybody can help here. Like, what's, what's the problem? It's so it's like, difficult to, to develop this kind of technology. Well, uh, well, I'm, I'm not, well that's, that's not what they're talking about in the article, though. Uh, it may be expensive to buy the technology, but what, what are we talking about? What's the big problem with wind? It's a problem with solar energy too. And the, uh, it depends energy, on the place you. Is it reliable? Use. Re reliable, yeah, yeah, and it depends on the location, right? That's very important. The the environment, I, th yeah. I think. But then, dam. There's a, a real basic problem with wind and solar. I. It depends on the Where? place, well, and on the place you install. That's, Sorry, that's not what I'm getting at. Gwen, oh. are you going to make a comment? I think that the problem is what if the wind isn't blowing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you and have so, no wind to produce power. Yeah, right. And so it's not constant. In, in it, in it's, the wind is not necessarily blowing all the time. And so, yeah, you I mean, are we ever going to be powered 100% with wind power? Probably not. But... Uh, um, you know, it's it could be an important part of the electricity production for the United States. It's not totally consistent. It, it, it's good and then not so good. All right, and what I'd like to do is just to move this down here, and and let's read the the final paragraph. And so, Armando, are you there? No. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead, what does it, sorry, but what does it mean, back each other up? Yeah, good. Uh, so what does back each other up mean? Uh, can somebody mm. describe that? Can I? Uh, yes, go ahead, Wayne. It means to support. Each other. Yeah, to support. And so, uh, but when? To support in which way? To have different in alternatives. Way. In this case, it would be uh, when... Uh, when you have a place with no wind, no wind, yes. and there is another place, it might be another place with a lot of wind. Yeah, that backs so, you up. Yeah. So when said it's a positive way, you were, you know, you're talking about, yeah, when when it's if there's solar power, you need something to back it up when the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Slim, did you have a comment? To complete each other. Well, okay, to provide sort of complete coverage, yeah, uh, consistent energy production all the time, 24-7. Reliable. Yeah, reliable, 24-7. Yeah, great. Yeah. And uh, Dem, could you finish reading the article for us? Hello, Dem, are you there? Yes, okay. Oh, great. Yeah. Now, did you already read? Yeah. Some? Um, at the moment, we provide. Go ahead, please. Dim, are you there? Okay. Yeah. At the moment, at the we moment. provide about three point five percent of our elect electri electricity, electricity in the U.S. The Wind Association says a reasonable goal. Is to raise 
that to 20% of the nation's electricity needs by uh, 2030. That would mean building maybe uh, 75,000 more wind uh, turbines, Salerno says, and not building, not building them all in one place. Right, yeah. Not building them all in one place. Okay, great. And so you can see on the document that it, the text continues, but this is the transcript. And so this is what I'm hoping that people have downloaded because I have a radio broadcast. Now, uh, this is National Public Radio from the United States. Now, this is fairly advanced, so you're going to need the audio listening and the transcript reading. So just give me one minute to get this playing and be ready to read and listen, hopefully from your own document. Power is growing faster than ever. The latest numbers show that almost half the new sources of electricity added to the U.S. power grid last year were wind farms. And that's led several scientists to wonder, is the sky the limit? But it turns out there's a problem. It's actually possible to have so many turbines that they start to lose power by stealing each other's wind. NPR's Christopher Joyce reports on scientists now trying to find that saturation point. There's a thing about wind that sailors call dirty air. If you're sailing directly downwind of another sailboat, you'll slow down. That's because the lead boat creates a turbulent vortex behind it as the wind spills off its sails. Dirty air means less power. The blades on a wind turbine make dirty air too, so engineers space them far apart. But wind developers want to build over 100,000 turbines in the U.S. alone. Would that spread dirty air far and wide? Very large wind farms, we can now see long footprints that extend, in some cases, tens and tens of kilometers downstream, where you have slower-moving wind. That's Harvard physicist David Keith. He's one of several scientists who've designed computer simulations to see what might happen at huge wind farms. If we're going to scale wind power up to supply a significant fraction of the global energy demand, say 10% of global energy demand as we get towards mid-century, then these effects begin to matter. Exactly how much they matter, we still don't know. The answer has become a kind of puzzle for a group of atmospheric scientists. Just what, they ask, is the saturation point for wind power, when the wind is so dirty that there's no point in building one more turbine. So far, that point is hypothetical. To get to saturation, you'd need huge wind farms, thousands of square miles of turbines. With 45,000 big turbines now in the U.S., that's not a problem. Atmospheric scientist Mark Jacobson at Stanford University says turbines would have to get up into the many millions before you lose a serious amount of wind. And people are thinking how to get around the problem. We found that by spreading out the wind farms themselves, then you reduce this impact of having low energy when you just have one huge wind farm with lots of turbines. Elizabeth Salerno at the industry's American Wind Energy Association says wind developers are making sure they're not going to dilute the wind. Doing that would just lose money. Our developers spend a lot of time with experts and atmospheric scientists to ensure that they are siting each individual wind turbine and the entire project in a location and a layout that's going to optimize their results. But as you build more and more wind farms, spreading them out could present complications. You need to have transmission lines reasonably close by. As you get more wind farms, more people are likely to complain about their view, and lots of places aren't windy enough to build anyway. Even with those limits, though, Salerno says there's plenty of wind to go around. We have enough wind resource in the U.S. onshore, on land, to do 10 times over what our power production today. That's 10 times all the power produced now in the U.S. by coal, nuclear power, hydro, everything. Salerno says no one expects wind power to come anywhere close to that. For one thing, the nation's electricity grid runs more reliably if utilities can draw on different kinds of energy that can back each other up. At the moment, wind provides about 3.5% of all U.S. electricity. The Wind Association says a reasonable goal is to raise that to 20% of our electricity needs by 2030. She says that would mean building maybe another 75,000 wind turbines and not building them all in one place. Christopher Joyce, NPR News.
<laughs> All right. Hello. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Great. All right. Hello. There's a bit of a delay with that. So good. How did you do on being able to understand uh, the dialogue? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. And then I was just thinking. Um, and I think it was Mina that asked about uh, to back up something. That is to have a an extra copy. So we also use it that way. You need to back up your files. Means to have a second uh, emergency copy of the computer files. So yeah. yes, great. All right, and so, one more. sorry, when? Yeah, when I listen to the podcast. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the word turbine was pronounced turbine. Yes, as well. and and that did not sound right at all. Uh, so I disagree with the radio broadcast. Um, I don't think people are pronouncing it as turbines. Now, uh, in places, uh, some of the religions in India, where uh, clothing, uh, or sorry, cloth wrapped around uh, their hair and the top of their head, and that. I think is is referred to as a turbine, and so I would say turbines, wind turbines. Okay, <laughs> but I noticed that. Thank you for bringing that up. I I already had forgotten. Now, <clears throat> what I wanted to do is to bring up the document again, and so I think that this this picture is kind of neat, and so I just wanted to ask people, what would you think? of living near this. So would you complain about this as being ugly and blocking your view? Or would you be, you know, worried that it was it was going to make noise or uh, what what do you think? And uh, Andre, could you maybe give us a comment of uh, about the this picture? Yeah, and and wind power, uh, wind turbines in general. Or wind turbines <laughs> in general. Uh, uh, would you support them being built near your home, or like if you had a house on the beach, would you be angry if they put something like this in the ocean, or? Uh, I don't. Uh, no, I feel uh, I support this idea because uh, I support uh, clean energy in general. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. Uh, but the problem is uh, economically, uh, financially. I think it's a, a little complicated to to how can I say uh, to imp to implant this kind of uh, technology okay. in to, many yeah. places. Okay, to install maybe or, or yes. construct. Yeah. Okay. No, it's a very expensive uh, investment. Yeah, for sure. Uh, when, uh, what, what do you think? What would be your personal reaction? I personally think it would be okay if we have one or two, all not many places like this, because um, my country has long coastlines, as I said. So several places like this to serve the community is no brainer. Yeah, like it's okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so, you know but you, they you should not want a huge wind farm. Yeah, they should not build these wind farms uh, like in front of the beach. Like there are a lot of other places where we cannot, you know, swim or where it is not a beach. We can build wind farms there. Okay. Yeah, and it wouldn't just be the ocean. I might be talking about if you have a house and there is a view of the mountains, and they build a wind farm between you and the mountains. Would you think that that was ugly? Would you be angry? I'm not sure if it yeah. if it's too much. Yeah, it would be yeah. overwhelmed, but just yeah. one or two is okay. Okay, great. Uh, Juan Manuel, what would be your personal opinion of having some of these this technology installed where you live? Uh, I was listening the what what they said, and I agree with them. It's mm -hmm. good to have a clean energy, but on the other hand, it's Kind of depressive to see so so many turbines uh, 
Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, personally, I find them sort of beautiful, but yeah, they're definitely not <laughs> natural. <laughs> I mean, they're not trees. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, great, excellent. And uh, Slim, a comment from you, please. Yes, uh, actually, I think um, they are not uh, so ugly. I have passed some time uh, one in the one clip. Uh, I see it uh, farm like that, but it's uh, it seems very beautiful with uh, the nature. <laughs> but uh, in the mountain, because man. I, I don't think they will be uh, installed or built in the near my house because uh, with the building they will stop the air and they will have uh, die air, uh, dirty air. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And, uh, they will not uh, turn uh, uh, good. Yeah, but they would not turn really. well. Uh, powerfully, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I wanted just to say something quickly. Uh, has anyone heard of some of these very tall buildings in cities, skyscrapers, yes. that have one of these uh, wind generating turbines at the top? Uh, just like yes, Slim uh, said, there, Dubai, there are no buildings blocking the wind. It's up high above the city. So, yeah. Uh, Mina, a, a comment from you? Uh, yes. Uh, well, if, if I told you to choose between two houses, the first house is near a nuclear, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> facility to produce power, and the other house is, uh, yeah, is, is like visual, visual polluted, you know, uh, right. uh, there is a lot of wind power uh, devices, so which one you, would you choose? Yeah, sort of visual, visual pollution, yeah. Yeah, yes. and, and you know, and then these uh, thermoelectric plants, I, I, I think they're called thermoelectric plants, which, which burn coal or they burn diesel fuel, yeah, and I would not or want to live love. near one of them, yeah. Well, I, I definitely would not want to live near a, a nuclear plant, but yeah. <laughs> but, but then, you would be paid. Yeah, but then you, oh, you need to... Big. Sorry? You will be paid for living near that. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very cheap houses. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, but the, the problem is you need to live a very long distance away from the nuclear reactor to be totally safe. But, uh, I think there, yeah. is a, there is another uh, um, for that, uh, to as say, safety, to fall. In case of uh, uh, destruction or something like that, a, a disaster, right? Yes, yes. So they would evacuate that area. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's great. And uh, Andre, another comment? Anything? It's um, okay. Yeah, but uh, just quickly, Brazil uh, is there talk of having to build more hydroelectric projects or? Really, yes. does does, produce, uh, does Brazil have enough electricity? Uh, in the north region, uh, now the, the, our government is building a new uh, hydroelectric mm -hmm. okay. in the near Amazon forest. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that your the economy is growing so much. Uh, when? Yes. Uh, what? Uh, do you have a, a final comment? Yeah, I think my country also like try to draw on different sources mm -hmm. of energy, so that we don't have to rely in only like one method of producing an energy. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's way. And uh, the economy is growing very quickly in Vietnam, isn't it? Mm, yeah, but it slows. Yeah, it, yeah, it slows down. Oh, it it a has slowed bit. down. Yeah, yes. like like everything. Yeah. yeah, it has slowed mm -hmm. down. Yeah. But there's talk about needing more electricity. Okay. Yes. Um. Actually. Yeah, we've been in the like of electricity okay. over a long period of time, but uh, recently I think the situation is getting better. Okay. Oh, good. All right. So you've been lacking it. Uh, Slim, uh, a final comment from you, please. No, uh, actually, 
I have uh, I am interested about the renewable in, uh, energy and uh, I have uh, uh, a chemical and process engineering uh, in that field but uh, I think we have uh, as uh, a conclusion we have to use nuclear energy uh, sometime or other fossil fuels or to uh, complete uh, the the part of the renewable there is no energy. only the, I think the only one is um, I don't know geothermal geothermal uh, is it uh, correct geothermal yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's, the only that's one in the life <laughs> okay nice. great and uh, a final comment from Mina I wish that uh, Egypt take advantage of um, solar and wind power. Yeah, well, it's it's happening. <laughs> it, it's now you have hydroelectric power. Yeah, we have the high dam. Okay, and that is still producing enough electricity, or there is a shortage of electricity. No, every day uh, there is a power cut. Oh, oh okay, all right, yeah. And uh, uh, thermal solar, uh, Slim, what did you want to yes. say there? Yes, it's a new technology, uh, I think, uh, useful for, for, for the solar. That's uh, uh, make uh, heating the water under 1,000 degrees Celsius. It's, uh, maybe it can be the solution for the, the liability, <laughs> maybe. Well, I, I I think it is the solution, <laughs> and and so we just need to we just need to do it. But uh, great, excellent, thank you so much for your participation. Excellent comments, good work, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. And remember, come to my Facebook page and post a specific idea about a topic that you find interesting, and I will look up some materials and do a class on it. So I hope to. Hear from okay. you. All. Take care. See you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Take care, Thank Joe. You. See you. Okay. Bye, guys. Good work. Good work.